Hello, Esther. Hello, um, Abraham. Um, we look so much the same. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my heart's pounding. Um, so I had a few things. Um, um, relationships with negative people. Is that because you're attracting or could it be something that was before you started to do the law of attraction? Like you're kind of trapped with somebody that's always negative. What your question was just now is, did I attract it deliberately or did I just attract it not knowing how the law of attraction works? Yeah. And the answer is you attracted it in this situation before you knew what the law of attraction was, but you cannot attract something unwanted without holding the vibration of that a lot. So really it doesn't matter how you got to that point. The question is what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? It's kind of one of those things where I'll meditate. I get up, I'm getting on a good mood and first text is, you know, something bad. So I'm driving along in a good mood, going to work and then this bad text comes up. Whether you're talking about your point of attraction in relationship to the whole world, in relationship to a work environment, in relationship to a personal relationship, whether it's the whole world that you're attracting from or one person, it's still attraction, attraction, attraction. And what we mean by that is that whether it's the whole world or one person, there are things that when you focus upon them, you feel good about. And there are things that when you focus upon them you feel bad about and it feels a little confusing to you because in your scenario here you were feeling good until they were not feeling good and then they dumped their not feeling good into your what you were feeling good and then you didn't feel good so it feels like they are the reason that you don't feel good but there was something that happened before any of that happened and that was you had a vibration of expectation about what you were gonna get from that person and you know what's really an important thing to realize is that your vibration is where you last left it on every subject so since that's something that often happens it comes to be a practiced vibration that's what a belief is it's a vibration or a thought that you continue to think expectation and belief are just practiced thoughts so the remedy is you've got to think other thoughts even though those are the most obvious logical thoughts and that feels annoying it makes you want to yell why do I have to do the calibrating that's the one causing the trouble why do I have to do all of the calibrating and we say because you are the attractor to you sometimes you have to step back away from it it's nice when you can get away but while you are away if you can do something get out ahead of your next encounter by activating in yourself deliberately things about that relationship in other words we can feel that you're not ready to walk away from that relationship sometimes you are sometimes you trip over something so many times and you calibrate so often we've said to Esther on a few occasions that when you do your calibrating so that you really clean up your vibration and there's someone in your world who keeps giving you the residual stuff and you keep trying to clean it up eventually you will clean it up enough that one of two things will happen either they will join you in your non-resistance or the law of attraction will bounce them off but what happens to so many of you you don't like the idea of being bounced off from anyone even though they are miserable to live with you don't want to bounce off of them so rather than hold your own and call them to you you calibrate to them and complain about it so you just sort of kind of have to decide that it matters to you enough to feel good that you're gonna find a way of doing it more and more you've learned of course when that text comes or when that call comes when that grouchy one is there it's not good to engage but if you don't engage if you are aloof then you get into even more trouble because someone who doesn't feel good is desperately looking for relief and you're the target so what you got to do is just be ready you've got to be ready you've got to be so in love with life and you and them and whatever that them coming at you just doesn't get you off your game anymore
It's not like that. You hold steady even in the midst of it. And then there will be improvement. Haven't you seen that sometimes too? So if you heard from us just now that it's all you're doing, then you heard what we meant to say. <laughs> and that's hard to hear because it's attraction, attraction, attraction. Esther says, it's attraction, it's attraction, it's attraction, it's attraction. Damn it. It's attraction, it's attraction. There's no assertion. No one can assert anything into your experience any more than you could set your radio dial on one station and get something that's being broadcast from another. This attraction is accurate and exact. So if it keeps coming, it's because your observation of it is keeping it active within you. You got to find a way to observe around that. This is the general process for that. Go general. Step back. Look at your life in general. Look at how you really feel. Acknowledge how good you were feeling. What a good mood you were in and often are in. What your true nature is. How well your life is going on most regards. How well you get along with people. You do, you get along with people until you get somebody up close to you who believes that you are responsible for how they feel. You can never solve that. You've just got to not buy into that. You are not responsible for how someone else feels. They are responsible for how they feel. You are not responsible for how someone else feels. They are. You cannot do enough nice things to people who have decided that you're responsible because the next time they don't feel good, they're going to blame you for that. And then you want to say, but what about this? And what about this? What about this? I have a big long list of things that I do to make your world better. And you've picked this one little thing and you're going to use that as your excuse to not be happy and you're going to blame me. And they won't answer that question, but the answer to that is yes. Yes, I am. I'm doing it right now. And what are you going to do about it? And so the first thing that we would do is acknowledge that anybody who is feeling negative emotion, that's on you. That's on you. And it's not your nature. You know why? Oh, we are so happy to have this conversation with you. You know why it is not your usual nature to accept your own point of attraction and assign it to yourself and assign someone else's point of attraction. Here's the primary thing that humans do that makes that not come naturally to you at first. This is going to be an interesting way of approaching this because you are harmonizers your natural harmonizers well now that sounds like your natural calibrators it means the same thing you are natural harmonizers you're seeking harmony you're seeking balance all the time it's why you're able to walk under more difficult conditions it's why the first little thing doesn't just call you to fall right down you are stabilizers you do have a sort of gyroscope not only in your physiology but in your psychology you are natural balancers but what that means to some of you is that because you want so much for the people around you or the person around you to get you to understand you that you try hard to get them to do that so if they show a little sign of unhappiness you try to harmonize or compensate for that well that's not a good idea because what it does it teaches them that you will do all of the adjustment and it leaves them incapable of managing their own experience in the world if you do that with your children people call it coddling them or spoiling them or giving them everything they want if you do that with your children they're not prepared for a world that will not do that for them you want them to know about the law of attraction you want them to know that it's what they're offering vibrationally that is bringing back to them whatever they're getting and there's nothing inappropriate about letting someone attract discomfort from you and maybe even angry words to let them know you are attracting this from me it's not what I want to give you and I'm doing my best to calibrate in ways so that it's not what I give you but you make me feel this way because you feel so strongly this way about me attraction is this two-way street all the time isn't it did you hear us earlier when we were talking about your inner being
and how there's no resistance and so that is a powerful attraction when you join forces with your inner being because you've practiced loving and you've practiced looking for positive aspects and you've tuned yourself to the best of the best of the best of this person because that's where your inner being is tuned then what happens is you can stand in that tuning and not be drawn not let the other draw from you something that doesn't feel good to you when it's drawn from you did that make sense to you well, let us put to you this way whatever the dominant vibration in the room is will dominate that's what mob rule is whatever is dominant will dominate and so if you walk into an environment maybe it's just mob of one person who's all wrapped up in everything that's gone wrong and wanting to blame someone and you're there so it's you unless you have done something about your alignment with who you are when you get there that dominant vibration is going to make you a cooperative component to it Did that makes sense to you when you stood before Jesus dripping your illness Jesus said don't tell anybody about this healing because he knew that when you got home all shiny and bright and walking well again that someone would convince you that it wasn't real because their memory of who you had been was different than his he did not allow himself to see your illness he practiced knowing who you really are and had full vision of the vortex version of you and his full vision of the vortex version of you was so dominant that for that time you could not be ill in his vibration because he owned the room